Welcome to Sunday Worship, everybody. We're happy to be back with you. I'm going to read the call to worship this morning from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you today um, that we could be together, that we can worship you. Um, and I just pray you'll continue to watch over this church family um, as, a, as a group and as individuals. Keep us safe. Help us to be healthy. And we just pray all this in your name. Amen. The Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that He should give His only Son to make a wretch His treasure. How great the pain of searing loss! The
Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior, isn't he? Sing Alleluia, Christ is risen. Bow down before Him, for He is Lord of all. Sing Alleluia, Christ is risen. Oh, what a say. Isn't he wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. Good morning, Bridge Community. Good to be with you uh, this morning. Hopefully you're, uh, you're kind of hovering around your nice toasty uh, computer and staying warm uh, out of this brisk weather that we're having right now. Uh, if you have your Bibles or your Bible app, I'm going to get you to look up uh, 1 Peter chapter 1. We're going to read verses 14 to 25. So 1 Peter, it's, uh, it's towards the end of the New Testament, uh, just before uh, 1 John. So starting at verse 14. As obedient children... Do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. 
for it is written, Be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believed in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. For all people are like grass and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The glass, uh, grass <laughs> withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Craig uh, had been an alcoholic for more than a dozen years. He'd lost everything he had, including his wife and son, uh, because of his selfishness and addiction. Things began to change uh, after he gave his life to Christ, but he still fell regularly into his old habits. It didn't help that he'd lost his well-paying job and was clerking at a local grocery store that was well-stocked with all his favorite drinks. After a few years of going back and forth between Christ and the bottle, he finally cut the ties and out of obedience of Christ, quit his job. With no income and uh, hope only in Christ, he was in a desperate state. Uh, after an interview with a sheet metal company down the street from his new church, he cried out to God. He said, God, if you give me this job, I will give you my first paycheck. And surprisingly, he got the job. Craig clearly remembers the day when he got his first paycheck. Stacks of bills needed to be paid, but penniless, uh, he was penniless, but determined, uh, he endorsed the check over to the church and walked it to the church office without waiting for the Sunday offering. That was the moment, he says, that changed his life because now he understood what it meant to trust God. As of today, according to to Pastor Bill White. Craig has been sober for 25 years. He's a manager at that sheet metal company and he serves as an elder at his local church. This morning we're continuing our look at 1 Peter and we're going to take a look at the Christ full life. Uh, Peter spoke here of being holy. Uh, reminding his hearers of the verse from Leviticus chapter 11. I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy. Uh, Leviticus 11, uh, 44a. When our lives are anchored in God's word, we discover that holiness is at the center. That word holy means separated for God's use or, or separated to God. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it, God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. Genesis 2 verse 3. When God spoke to Moses from the burning bush, he said, Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. I found in Exodus 3 5. And as part of his... Uh, covenant with his people, God called the Israelites a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Uh, Exodus 19 verse 6. Holiness indicates a, a character quality in us which emulates the character qualities of God. But it's not just adopting someone else's traits. It's about becoming so full of Christ 
that we exude these qualities out of our lives. So what do we learn here this morning about uh, a Christful life or a set-apart life? Well, verse 14 says we are set apart by our obedience. Henry Nowen uh, was visiting Austin College in Texas uh, several years ago. And in one of his messages, he spoke about listening and obedience. The word obedience, he said, comes from the Latin word uh, obodir, which means to hear. And by contrast, the Latin word for death is absurdus, which we get the word absurd. To truly hear Christ is to obey him. Not to hear and obey is the way of absurdity in living. And in order for the Israelites to be called a kingdom of priests, in verse 6, Exodus 19, 5 says, Excuse me, now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all the nations you will be my treasured possession. And Jesus told his disciples to teach the future generation of followers to obey everything that he had commanded. And in doing so, he would always be with us. So we're set apart by our obedience. We're also set apart by understanding that God is our Father and Jesus is our Redeemer. Paul told the Corinthians, Yet for us there is but one God, the Father from whom all things came and for whom we live. And there is but one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things came and through whom we live. 1 Corinthians 8, 6. And of course, as Jesus famously said in the Gospel of John, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. John 14, 6. Jesus is our emancipator. He redeems us by his spilt blood as the lamb without blemish, as verse 19 points out. And as both Peter and Paul point out, Jesus has been since before the creation of the world, chosen as our lamb from the very beginning. And Jesus was not only the sacrificial lamb for us, but he is also the resurrected Lord, whom the Father raised from the dead and glorified him. Through his death, Jesus freed humanity from their captivity, captivity to the slavery and death of sin. And through his resurrection, he offers us a life which is glorious and indestructible as his own, as William Barclay puts it. We are set apart by that understanding. We're also uh, set apart by the love that we show. That, that set apart life is shown through, through that holy love. Now that you have purified yourselves by obeying the truth so that you have sincere love for each other, love one another deeply from the heart. Uh, verse 22. Not only are we to be obedient to the truth of the word of God, but we're also called to love one another. And that's what Bible college professor Johanna Catanacho discovered. He pastored a, a small church in the city of Jerusalem. He is a Palestinian living in Israel and a Christian to boot. So he faces a wide variety of persecution. One of the more dangerous forms of harassment comes from the Israeli soldiers who patrol the city looking for potential terrorists. And these soldiers would routinely impose spontaneous curfews on Palestinians. Christ's command in the Sermon on the Mount to love your enemies seemed impossible to Johanna. And yet there it was, unambiguous and unchanging, for me, love was an active and countercultural decision because I was living in a culture that promoted hatred of the other, 
Johanna says. And not only did the context promote hate, but the circumstances fed, fed it on a daily basis. The newspapers, television, media, neighbors, everything. One of the markers of the Israeli Jews and the Palestinian Arabs is alienating the other. To break that marker, I must have some other worldview. At first, Johanna tried and failed in his attempts to feel love. Instead, the Israeli soldiers' random daily checks for Palestinian identification cards, sometimes stopping them for hours, fed Johanna's fear and anger. As he confessed his inability to God, Johanna realized something significant. The radical love of Christ is not an emotion, but a decision. He decided to show love, however reluctantly, by sharing the gospel message with the soldiers on the street. With new resolution, Johanna began to carry copies of a flyer with him that were written in both Hebrew and English, with a quotation from Isaiah 53 and the words real love printed across the top. Every time a soldier stopped him, he handed him both his ID card and the flyer. And because the quote came from the Hebrew scriptures, the soldier usually asked him about it before letting him go. And after several months of this, Johanna suddenly noticed his feelings toward the soldiers had changed. I was surprised, you know, he says. It was a process, but I didn't pay attention to that process. My older feelings were not there anymore. I would pass in the same street, see the same soldiers as before, but now finding myself praying, Lord, let them stop me so that I can share with them the love of Christ. A holy life is, is one that has love for each other at the center. God is love, and he wants us to be all about that holy love ourselves. Scripture teaches us to love each other sincerely from our hearts. Loving each other is even commanded from Jesus Christ and reminded to us by the apostles who taught about his teachings. In the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 13, verses 34 and 35, Jesus said, A new command I give you. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love, love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And Paul told the Romans, Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. And in the first letter of John, uh, he wrote, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. 1 John 4, 11 to 12. One of God's most notable characteristics is his love. David, in one of his psalms, said, how priceless is your unfailing love, O oh God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. And again, in John's first letter, he said, God is love. God's love to us is unconditional. And as our illustration points out, we not only love the ones we like, we also love our enemies too. We're to love those we put up with and those who have hurt us. We not only love our family, we love our neighbors also. That's the kind of love we're to strive for in our lives. The way we think, talk, and act should be influenced by this holy love. A Christian who has an authentic relationship with Jesus Christ is someone who strives in all things to act in love. Both the example of Christ and the Word of God 
teach us what it means to love one another. The influence of the world makes this one of the most challenging commands to follow. It's difficult to follow because the world tells us that love is something to be earned. For God, unconditional love is simply given because it cannot be earned in any way. We are to be people that give love no matter the conditions. The set-apart life also means that we're, we live imperishable lives. For you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, through the living and enduring word of God. Verse 23. As followers of Jesus, we have the promise of eternal life, and it, and, and it is to us through the word of God. Peter brings attention to our identities as being born again in God. If we live the Christful life, we are made imperishable. Faith in Christ makes us indestructible. Even when we physically end in this life, we continue to live with God in eternity in the next When judgment day comes and all people have to give an account of their lives, we are protected because of our faith in Christ. We have entrusted our lives into the hands of God, and even though we too will have to go through the pains and groans of judgment day, we will come through and find our see, find ourselves at the feet of our Heavenly Father. Excuse me. Knowing that this is not all there is, uh, means we can be content in what we have or don't have. We don't have to strive for all the toys. We can trust that God will provide for our care. And I think that's why Paul told the Philippians, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Philippians 4, 11 and 12. Living this imperishable life also means we don't have to be afraid of death. Yes, uh, uh, death is, is a great mystery. It's, it's a scary thing. And it can be filled with pain and loss when we lose someone close to us. And it also can mean a painful passing of our own. But we serve the God who created the universe by the power of his voice. He has made promises to us. Paul said, when the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty four. And Jesus himself said, Very truly I tell you, whoever obeys my word will never see death. John eight fifty one. Maybe this story will will help a little bit. Pastor Michael Walter uh, shares it with us. A number of years ago I had the opportunity to tour the Villaroy and Bosch porcelain factory in Torgau, Germany. Porcelain is one of the most beautiful and enduring things that human beings can make. Even today, much of what we know from ancient cultures comes from what they made from clay. I was presented with a, a beautiful gift of a flower uh, vase that is painted with these letters, V-D-M-I-A-E. They stand for the Latin words, verbum de manet in aeternum. The word of God endures forever. What a beautiful inscription for a flower vase. The flowers are constantly being removed and thrown away. Their beauty only lasts for a while, but the beauty and love of God and his word lasts forever. With this truth, Peter shows us what we need. 
We are born again by the imperishable living and abiding word of God. The reality is everything around us to some degree is perishable. Uh, even the mountains, as intimidating as they look, can be brought down. Uh, think about uh, in our area, the Frank Slide, for example. And even with these bodies being as fragile as they are, we are promised one that will not die in the life to come. As long as we work on living a set-apart life or, or a, a Christ-full life by following Jesus Christ and keeping his word close to us, by loving others around our, us, our lives will continue from here into eternity. And that influence that we have on others, the, the love that we lavish on them, will give them the same opportunity to choose a set-apart life, just as we have made that choice for ourselves because of those that have influenced us. Listen again to Peter's words. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so just as God who called each of us is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Choose to be holy because the great I am is holy. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you uh, for your word. We thank you for this teaching uh, that has been passed down to us by, uh, by your hand, truly, Lord. Lord, our heart's desire is to serve you. And I pray, dear God, um, that you would, by your spirit, make us holy, make us new. I know we can't do it ourselves. We can't make ourselves holy. We can't. It's not about a list of do's and don'ts. I understand that. But I pray, God, you will help us set aside our preconceived ideas and focus in on what your word says to each one of us. Lord, uh, help us to remember to be obedient to what you've taught, to be obedient by what your son has said and done on our behalf. I pray too, Lord, that by your spirit, you would help us to be people of love. That we would show the world the love that you have shown us. That we would pass on this holy love unconditionally so. That we would forget the, the path the world tries to put us on, even in regards to love, that it's about earning, it's about conditions, but that we would remember the unconditional love you have shown us and show that to the world. And thank you, Lord, that if we continue to follow you, if we continue to love you and love others, we are given an imperishable life. We are given that indestructible life. And I pray, dear God, that we would continue to be an example to others. There are many around us, uh, our neighbors, our friends, our enemies, our family members. There are many that, that do not see Christ the way we see him, that do not believe in you, Lord, that do not accept what you've done. And I pray that we could be the living example of that, the embodiment of a holy, love-filled, set-apart, Christ-full life. Go with us now, Lord, and may we sense your going with us 
and for those needs within our family, our, our church family. I pray that you will watch over those that are sick and suffering. Fill them with strength and courage. Pray those that are feeling lonely and lost that you would comfort them and encourage them. And those of us that are looking for something to do, I pray, God, we will see what it is right around us that you have for us. Thank you, Lord, for all of these things. And I pray this in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Thank you for your time, church family, bridge community. Lord bless you and have a wonderful week. Our scars are a sign of grace in our lives. And Father, how you brought us through. Sky.